Well, I want to welcome, welcome everybody to our 23rd edition of the Heart of the Coach. Uh, we're thankful you have jumped on here to hear the heart of uh, our guest today and how it relates to his relationship with the Lord and his heart for the Lord and heart for football go together. Uh, my name is Brian McKenzie. had the privilege of serving uh, as a director of football for the Fellowship of Christian Athletes for the Midwest region and beyond. And our guest today is Maurice Crum. He's the co-defensive coordinator and the linebacker coach at Western Kentucky University. Uh, Maurice, welcome to the call. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Excited to be here. Yeah, we're glad to have you. Well, well, since you've not been in the normal routine of coach in the past few months, which we were just talking about before the call officially started, what are some of the things you and uh, Krista have, and the boys have enjoyed doing together that you might not have gotten to done if you were normally in your normal routine? Uh, I, I think with everyone else, you know, family time has certainly been uh, a positive in this whole deal. Just simply being together uh, and spending more time together has been phenomenal. Uh, one of the things that Chris and I got to institute um, a little bit before the pandemic started, we, we had a, a, a coach's uh, wife's uh, marriage retreat. Uh, and from that marriage retreat, we got a chance to converse and have some ideas and put some things together that we should do for our families. And this time kind of allowed us to uh, had that smooth transition into actually applying the thing. So many times you get a chance, you hear something like, man, that's cool. I really want to try this. I really, I really like to do that. But right after that, normally I would have been on the road with spring recruiting. And of course I'm going and not home and it's, and it's tough to, to institute uh, those ideas. And I think we got a chance to, to do them. We bought like a, a, a nighttime and a morning time devotion book uh, for the boys. So every morning at breakfast, we sit down, and I read it and we go over it and I ask them, you know, what does that mean to you guys? And it's just funny to hear their answers. And then I kind of explain it to them. And just having that time uh, to be together and institute uh, those practices uh, has been great. You know, we started doing family walks and um, just being outside and just, you know, I started training my sons, um, you know, just putting them through rigorous activities because they want to sit inside and play video games all day. But uh, it's, it's, it's just been good just to have those moments and, uh, my middle son, his birthday is May 1st, and that's in the peak season of uh, recruiting. And I, I've never, I haven't been home, you know, like in the house for his physical birthday. We have his birthday parties on the weekend, which I'm there for, but to actually be there on his birthday to wake up and say happy birthday to you, I think that that was special, at least for me, because uh, I know I've missed a lot of those. And it, it, was, it was fun to get some moments back uh, that I normally miss. Yeah, that's awesome. You should get church made Camp Crumb 2020. <laughs> <laughs> the neighbors, the neighbors walk around and they they smile all the time when they see the kids because they're just like laying out on the grass and like no more work, Dad. No more work, but it, it's it's awesome. Love it. I love it. Well, hey, you've been in a lot of football ga games as a player uh, in your time at Notre Dame playing and then uh, and coaching now for a while. So, what's one of the greatest football games you've been part of, and why was it so great? Uh, for, for me, I, th I think it's uh, the, my Notre Dame game from 2005, the, the Bush push game. Um, a, it was a tremendous game. Uh, there was a lot of talent on the field. Uh, and I was a very young player. Uh, I was a redshirt freshman at the time. And then uh, just that, that game itself, just the, the star power, just the build up to it, and the, the fan buzz, you could, you could feel it on like Monday. And I, I, I never, ever uh, forgot that feeling. And then also, you know, we, we were on the, the losing side of that, but um, just it just shows you how hard it is in a season to, to, to be successful. You know, how, you know, if we win that game, there's no telling, you know, what bowl game, what situation we end up in, where our ranking is. And we never truly really got back to that point. That was our opportunity in, in my whole career there at, at Notre Dame to, you know, to be, you know, top one, two, three team in the country. Uh, and have a chance to play for a national championship. It's it's extremely hard to get there, and uh, you just got to cherish those moments. And you just never know um, if you're going to get that close again. I mean, and that always stuck out in my career. Like that, that was my one shot. That was my one opportunity. And I, I wish I could have done more or studied harder or, or whatever. Because those are the moments that I think that drives us as, as athletes and coaches. Yeah. Well, you you had a successful career playing. So what got you into coaching? Uh, for me, uh, I think it was, I don't know, I was kind of groomed to be a coach. Uh, I was, when I was playing at Sacramento with UFL, uh, on Denny Green's team, uh, a lot of the guys, I'd never really thought about it, but a lot of the guys would always come and ask me questions and they were like, man, you have a really 
easy way of of uh, articulating information so that like I, I get it. Like sometimes when, as, as coaches, we get, you know, so enamored and like we study, this is what we do. But being able to, to break it down to, to a level where uh, people can get it um, and, and they get it quickly was something that was natural to me. I, my, my mom, she grew up substitute teaching. Uh, my grandmother, she ran the church at, uh, I mean, she ran the school at my church. Uh, so I grew up around teachers. My other grandmother, she worked in the school system her whole life. Uh, so teaching and having teachers around me was was kind of in my blood. And then you know, my, my dad had me uh, his senior year of high school. So I grew up around football. You know, yeah. uh, I've never watched a football game as a fan. You know, just as a child, I was it was always see, look at this lineman, look how he's leaning. You know, look at the linebackers, Boston Bow. You know, look at this blitz. Like that's that's how I was raised. You know, and that's how I enjoy watching football. So you kind of mesh those two things together. And kind of being a coach came, it was easy. It was natural for me. Uh, and it was just, it was it was a smooth transition. You know, once I got done playing, I was like, what the heck am I going to do with my life? Mm-hmm. Like, hey, I can at least try to be a grad assistant, get a degree, and then figure myself out from there. But, you know, once I got in, it's that was it. You know, that was it. And I loved it. And I told my wife, like, there's, there's nothing else I want to do. Yeah, love it. Love it. Love it, Marie. So, so now you're into coaching, and that's what got you into it. But why do you coach? What's your purpose in coaching? Uh, for me, just because football's been really good to my family. Uh, my dad played at the University of Miami. Uh, first one his family to graduate. I got to attend the University of Notre Dame. I got to graduate. I got three other cousins that went to schools, got a chance to graduate. Football's been really good to my family. And it's a game that, you know, it's, um, it's given me opportunities. It's allowed me to see the world in a way that I've Growing up, I never thought I would have seen or learned things or meet people or just just do things that I've never done before simply because of the game of football. And I want to make sure that that, that young men uh, respect this game. You know, I want to see them uh, have some of the same opportunities. Uh, I want to see them uh, grow and become the best versions of themselves. You know, um, I, I just think that being a coach and my experiences in, in my life, uh, it gives me a platform to, to share with them. The first thing I tell every kid who signs with me is like, I want the best version of you on the field, off the field. And I only know one way and that's, that's, that's hard work. And I want to do it the way I know how. And if you, I promise me, I will give you all that I have so I can see you be successful. In those moments and when it happens, you know, you get kids who graduate and I haven't been coaching that long, but I've, I've, I've seen a few kids graduate, you know, some of the, some of my guys have children and, they text me and say, hey, coach, you're an inspiration to me of, you know, how to be a father. And if you, if you don't mind, can, can I bounce ideas off of you or, you know, how I should handle situations? Those are the things I want to do. You know, I want to help them be the best version of themselves, dad, brother, uh, player, uh, whatever their goals are. I want to use every resource I have to, to see them be successful. Yeah, love it. Just there to serve. There to yeah, serve. Yeah, Well, how do you want your relationship with Jesus to practically impact your players there at Western? Yeah, well, for, for me, it's just about, again, taking, taking simple moments or, or simple instances to, to not push, but to say, hey, have you thought of, you know? And then more than anything, I try to live my life a certain way where the guys gravitate toward and, and want to ask, and, and I keep my doors open and my phone on for them to come into my home and have them around my family so that, so that they see. You know, I think a lot of times when, when people just see, uh, that, that, that piques curiosity. You know, people want to know, um, you know, why are you that way? Or why do you do things this way? Or you know, what's that like? Like, why am I drawn to you? And I think that's my opportunity to, to, to take my knowledge uh, of the church and, and Christ and religion and just open the door for those guys and you know, provide them with knowledge and, and little things that they can take and you know hope hopefully I just I just want to help plant a seed for my guys. Mm. Help plant the seed and like I said before, I want to help it I want to help them plant it, help them grow it so they can be the best version of themselves. Yeah, great. Right. Name two of the most influential coaches you've worked with and tell us why they've been so influential in your life. Sure. Um when I met uh Mike Sanford Sr. Uh he was the head coach at Indiana State uh in 2016. Uh, his son, Mike Sanford Jr., was the offensive coordinator at Notre Dame. So that's kind of how I linked up with them. But when I, when I met him uh, in 2015, uh, 16, uh, he, he helped me to, 
to, to grow uh, as a Christian coach. Mm -hmm. Just watching him and uh, his, his faith and his belief and how he ran the program and what was important to him, uh, that was tremendous uh, for me to see uh, as a young coach and kind of trying to balance the two. Um, just seeing someone who coached at all levels, been around, you know, well-respected, uh, great, great father, you know, great husband, I, that really helped change me, you know, because I was still a little younger, a little bit rough and really aggressive, but he was he was really uh, comfortable putting his arm around me and pulling me in and, and providing me that guidance. And, and I look forward to, to, being, that, to being that and doing that uh, for someone else. Again, simply because I, I got a chance to see him in his ways every day. That, that piqued my curiosity and, you know, what are you reading? You know, how did you get to this point? Um, how, how, how are you established this way, you know, and that, and, and that curiosity really uh, piqued my interest and, and I want to do that same thing, you know, for my guys. The other coach is uh, Damani Cross. Uh, he was a defensive coordinator at Missouri for a while, but I met him when I was a grad assistant at Kansas. He's the first coach I worked for. Um, and one of the things I, I loved about him was his conviction. You know, when, when something wasn't right, like he was, he stood on the table and said, it's not right. You know, that's not fair to the guys. Like, you know, so so oftentimes we, it's easy to go with the flow. You know, so it's so easy to sit there and say, "Yeah, sure," but in your heart, when you know it's not right or you should say something, you should. And that conviction uh, from him, I, I've always respected. You know, he's always been a person to, to speak his mind and not afraid to, to go against the grain. And particularly when it came to the players, and again, those are two coaches when I was developing and trying to become the man I am today. They were. They were, they were there at pivotal points in my life, you know, and they were able to, uh, to provide me that guidance. And they were just being themselves. You know, you just never know who's watching you. And I was watching. And, and, those, and those two guys really helped me to, you know, develop uh, to the man I am today. That's great. Well, hey, during a busy football season, and, and they're, it may be extra busy this year with everything that's happened, how do you do or what do you do to personally foster your growth in your relationship with Jesus? I think for the first thing is uh, Wayne Dickens, our, our FCA guy here. He, I mean, he's tremendous for me. Um, you know, he's a guy that I can I can read a scripture and, and ask a question to, and we can have discussion. And he can help me come to, to to my own understanding. You know, I think it's pivotal uh, for me having someone else uh, to be able to to talk to and and go and you know he'll send me a text and have you read this or have you heard that? What do you think about? Uh, and I kind of use that. Uh, those opportunities to, to grow. Obviously, uh, there, there's church on Sundays, uh, which coach um, which coach is really good here uh, with us, giving us time on Sunday morning to be able to, to go to church on Sunday and then and then come in. And then it's my own time. Uh, I'm a I'm a big late late night guy, uh, so I kind of wait till everything's done during the day and uh, before I go home. Uh, I, I have two books. I have, I have three books. I have one uh, on my nightstand. I have one in my car. I keep one on my desk. So either when I'm, if I have it, if I forgot to do it at work, uh, I can read before I walk in the house. Uh, if I forgot all day and before I go to bed, there's a book there for me to read. Um, then I try to read, you know, a, a chapter or a paragraph or something uh, before I leave the office, before I shut down. And then, you know, that way, that, that's the last thing on my mind. So it's the first thing on my mind when I wake up. Because when I wake up in the morning, my time is, I, I try to keep my time for my kids. So I can spend time with them, do breakfast. Uh, but now that I started the devotional and stuff with them, so that's kind of a, another way uh, for me to grow. So uh, those are the ways that I kind of try to stay involved and continue to grow. Yeah. The key, the key thing there I heard, Maurice, was intentional. You're intentional right. about it. And that's what we got to be in the, in the busy schedule. We got to make sure it's part of it. That's great. Well, hey, you had not only had the privilege to play linebacker at Notre Dame, um, uh, now you're coaching linebackers. So what are some of the key foundational principles in developing linebackers for them to reach their potential? Yeah, for sure. Um, but I, I think one of the most important things is instincts. Uh, you know, it's something that you just kind of got to have. You got to be able to see, pull a trigger. And I, th I think first and foremost, it starts with that. You know, that's the first thing I look for is how, how instinctive is the guy? You know, how long does it take him to see a guard pull? Is he pulling the trigger and figuring it out later? Like, I think that's a that's a that's a key key point uh, for for linebacker play, you know. And the other part is mindset. Um, 
I know for me and my dad, uh, we weren't the, the biggest of, of linebackers. You know, I was I played around six foot, 225. Uh, my dad's 5'11", which he doesn't like to hear, but he is. Uh, he's five, he was about 5'11", probably 230. Um, but it, it's a mindset um, to, to play the position. With, with most positions it is, but particularly at, at linebacker, you got in your mind, you got to be able, you got to be able to cover the, the fastest slot receiver, you know, and get off the block of, of the biggest offensive line. You know, when you do that, yes, physical traits help, but if you don't have the mentality to do it, you just, you just won't be successful. And that was for me every day when I, when I put my cleats on the ground, I was the baddest guy on the field and nobody was going to get the best of me. And if they did, I always say Christmas comes once a year where everybody gets one. Uh, I just took that mindset and, and, and my instincts and just, and just played the game and just loved the game. I think, you know, those are the things I look for, you know, the, the instincts uh, and, you know, just that, that passion and then that mindset uh, to be successful. Yeah. Right. So as far as the, the physicality point part of it, I, I know that uh, obviously it's important playing linebacker. Sure. You got a young linebacker you're trying to, de to develop and he's wondering why he's not getting on the field and maybe it's because of physicality. What do you do to help him get over that hump? Um, maybe it's something with the weight room. Maybe it's just uh, uh, training him to, to be more aggressive. What, what are some of the things you can do to help him there? I, th I think the, uh, the one thing that I try to do is, again, it goes back to mindset. Uh, because if, if you don't have it in your mind to do it, there's, there's nothing that's going to get it done. Uh, so I tell him to take that approach, you know, in, in everything uh, that he does. You know, how are you lifting weights? Are you lifting weights just to lift weights and going through? Or are you looking at the bar like, I'm going to get the best of you today? You know, it's just about how you approach it every day. Like, you got to live your life one way in order to, 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 to have that skill or have that trait. So if you want to be, you know, aggressive and more physical, like, that's how you got to attack. You got to attack today. Like, are you studying aggressively? No. Are you passively playing Madden? Like, if it's just for fun, you're just kind of going through, that's, that's what you're going to get when you get on the field. But there's no switch for you. If you don't have it, you, you, you got to groom it, you got to grow it. And the only thing I know is to, in every aspect of your life, uh, to, to implement, uh, to have that attack approach. And then, you know, you start to see that, that aggression and, and that physicality uh, come out uh, when you get on the field. Right. Right. Well, what's been one of the biggest challenges you faced as a coach, and how did your relationship with uh, Jesus help you work through that? I think for me, it's patience. Uh, I was I was not a very patient young coach. Um, I was very uh, quick uh, to to yell, uh, to get in the face of. Uh, and again, I I just and I just when I spent that time with Coach Sanford. Uh, it really, really opened my eyes to how being patient, how I got, how he got more out of the guys being patient with them. And that allowed him to be more understanding. Uh, he got more out of his guys, you know. And I think for me, once I, being around him and reading scripture and just developing my mindset, you know, learn, learning that I had to be more patient uh, with the guys. Uh, and I started to get more out of them. I think that that, that, that was huge for me. And then I, and I carry that home too. Um, you know, I, I was the worst after I lost, after a loss or a tough day at work, I would bring it home. You know, my wife told me that's not fair to us. And I, and I realized that I have, I have to separate the world. I got, I got to be, I have to be patient in every aspect of my life because I had a bad day. And my, my wife has a lot of nonsense stories to tell me, like I, I need to be patient and listen, you know, when, when my kids just want to jump, hop on pop for a little while. I got to be patient and, and accept that that's, that's how they want to embrace me, you know, and I think, you know, uh, receiving and, and giving the patience is, is huge for me. Uh, and I think that was, that was an obstacle for me early uh, in my coaching career, which coach I am now is different from the coach I was four years ago. Yeah. That's one of the fruit of the spirit is uh, patience. Yeah. Yeah. And the more we know him, the more that begins to come out. Very yeah, I got, I got a football question for you here. So this fall, September 26, you may not even look at the schedule yet. You're going to be playing at Louisville. Okay. Right? You, you're, you're up by five. Okay. Three seconds left, mm -hmm. and they have the ball on your 15. Mm -hmm. All right. So what are you doing defensively to keep them out of the end zone? Is it my call, or am I, am I talking to the coordinator? You're, he's going to give you – he's going to – you're the co-DC, so, right? Okay. 
right now. You're the he's coach. He's gonna let me call it. I'll let you call it. This is on you right now. Big, big win at Louisville. I'm, I'm, I'm bringing pressure because I, I got an attack mentality. <laughs> um, and then I'm, and I won't have a guy in the, in the middle of the field. I'm probably gonna just double uh, the best receiver and let somebody else beat me. So I'm gonna get their best guy out, and then, and I'm, I'm bringing as many as I can bring. So he, he better be an empty because yeah. otherwise I'm bringing them. I see some of these guys on this call, and they were defensive guys. They're smiling when you said right bring pressure. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I got a couple more questions for you here, and then I'm going to open it up and let these guys ask some questions. But cool, Maurice, who's your hero and why? Uh, for sure, it's my dad, hands down. Um, my dad grew up uh, very poor, uh, did not have a lot. He's got some older brothers who uh, made some different life choices uh, as far as being a man, as far as being, um, you know, a family man. And my dad, being the youngest, uh, decided not to live his life that way. He was not going to be uh, the, the father that they were or, you know, the brother that they were. Uh, he was hands down, like, that That meant a lot to me. I look at, like, my family, when I look at, like, my, my close friends and their involvements of their fathers uh, is drastically different from mine. And I look at the life I live versus the life that they live, and it's drastically different. Um, so because he took that stance and saying that, hey, like, I'm going to live, I'm going to try to do, you know, the right way. Him, him, my, he and my mom did not work out, but there's, he's always been there. He's always been available. He's always been accessible. He's always been passing me those lessons. And he played linebacker, and I played linebacker. You know, I'm better than he was, at least in my mind. Uh, but, you know, it's just that, that bond and that relationship, um, and he was, he was a very, he's a very patient guy. My dad doesn't raise his voice for much, but when he talks, people listen. And, um, you know, just kind of modeling myself uh, after him and uh, his success in his life. And all he wanted was for me to be better than, than he was. Okay. Uh, I respect that. Yeah, love it. Love it. So one more question here. So give me a highlight from this past year. What's a highlight? Any, anything part? Football, your family, what what's been a highlight in this past year? I would I would definitely say it was, it was our bowl game. Uh, we played in the first responders bowl uh, down in Dallas. Uh, we we won the game on like a, a, a last second uh, field goal, uh, so that was an exciting game. But what was cool about it was uh, my mom was there, my stepdad was there, I was my whole family was like my my wife and kids they were there, being able to 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 win that mo to win and share that moment uh, with family was important because throughout my coaching and playing career, like I, I don't, I can't, I, I don't think we've won. I don't think I've won a bowl game, won a playoff game, mm. championship, anything. So uh, to have that moment and win and to share it with family, have family there with me uh, was awesome. That was a real highlight for me. Yeah, that's great. That's great. All right, hey guys, I uh, want to give you guys an opportunity to ask uh, some questions here uh, to Coach Crum. So if you got a question for Coach Crum, uh, just unmute yourself and fire away. All these coaches on the call, they usually got questions here. Let's see, well, here comes a question. Yeah, this is Gene Kroom at Jetson University. Uh, Maurice, how did your dad get to Miami? What what was his story in terms of his background? And then how, I mean, you talked about him talking about football and plays and things like that. What would he call in that same situation Brian gave you a second ago in that same ballgame? Uh, so so my, my it's funny. Uh, when I talked to my dad about uh, college and being recruited, he, he was like, son, I had no idea what was going on. It's like, I, he was like, they came, they asked me if I wanted to play. I was like, sure. And he was like, where's the school? How far away is it from home? He's like, oh, I can do that. And he just kind of said, yeah. Like, originally my dad was a, he was a baseball player. Uh, he kind of, he, he like me, he doesn't like when people say you can't. So he actually went out for football because his brothers told him that he wouldn't be good enough to play football. Because baseball was kind of the, the family sport. And uh, so he actually went out and turned himself into a player and he played hard. Miami came knocking and he just shrugged his shoulders and just said, yeah. And um, call wise, 
I think my dad will probably say, um, "Where who's their best player?" So I can go cover him. Um, so he would probably say, "I would I would cover the guy, take him away, wait for the quarterback to scramble, and then go get the sack to finish the game." <laughs> so, something around that, uh, I think, is is the story he gave me. All right. Another question. I also have another question here for Coach. All right, I got, I got another question for you. And some of these high school coaches might. Who, who's got somebody got a question? Somebody, Ben? I thought somebody was jumping in there. Well, so some of these, a lot of these guys are high school coaches. We got college coaches too. But what are you looking for for a fit at Western Kentucky? Not just for a linebacker, but you're recruiting and you're co DC now. Yeah. So you're all kinds of kids. What's What's a fit at Western Kentucky University in your football program? First and foremost, uh, the number one trait we want, which I know a lot of people say, but uh, we spend our time making sure the guy loves football. Uh, the guys who don't work here are the people who are uh, just happy to be on the team or just once they get here, kind of shut it off. Those guys end up leaving here. Uh, prior to us getting here, that culture was already in place. Um, it's it's phenomenal to see uh, how much our kids love football. They will do whatever it takes uh, to play football. So that kind of makes it easy, um, you know, when you ask them to do something, they get it done because they know you wouldn't ask them to do it unless it, if it's going to affect football. So those guys, I mean, they are all in on this game. Uh, defensively going to practice and watching how hard our kids play, it's because of that love of the game. And above all, you know, obviously we want big, strong, fast, like, like everybody else. But that love for the game um, has been a tremendous part of this place success. And um, I don't think we can waver on that. You know, we're, we're asking how many times a day does he lift? You know, what questions does he ask you in the film room? You know, do you know how much film he's watching? You know, do you have a huddle log that you can show us? Um, asking the teammates, like, you know, what kind, what kind of leader is, is, is the guy? Like, how does he practice? You know, that's the things we're looking for on tape. When we turn the tape on, we watch gameplay. We really want to see, you know, is he pursuing the ball? Like, how many, you know, plays 15 yards away is he making? Like, putting that effort on place. Because when you get a group of guys that swarm and have that mentality, I, I, I truly believe it, it's really hard. Uh, to, to, to beat that defense just because they're so persistent and, and they have that love and that hunger uh, to be successful uh, for the game. So that love of football is, is number one on the list. Yeah. Well, that's what makes an even successful. We got a love for something, right? And yeah. uh, continue that tradition on the, at, at West Kentucky. Hey, one, one of the former uh, running backs, great running backs at West Kentucky is actually on the call back in the late 80s and mid 90s. Donald Smith, I see him on the call here. And I, I know he's glad to hear Western's continuing to, 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 to get better and continue to, that tradition that was started way back then. So, no doubt. Well, let me make a quick announcement here and, and then uh, I'll say another few words for, to Maurice. But, guys, this Friday, um, we're going to have a special edition of the, the Heart of the Coach. We're going to have Tremaine Jackson, who we've actually had before, who's the head coach at uh, Colorado Mesa. We'll have Archie McDaniel, the co-DC at Texas State, and then Jed, Stu Jed Stugart, who's the head coach at Lindenwood University, on a special call to talk about what they're doing to be proactive and use their platform with their teams and what's going on in our culture right now. Engaging the community, engaging their team, to come together in unity. Um, uh, obviously, these guys are Christian. Obviously, they, they, they know the ultimate answer to the problems in our nation are Jesus to change hearts. But you got to be proactive. You got to be put yourself in a position for that to happen in the community. So those three guys are going to be on. I'm going to interview them and what they're doing because a lot of coaches are saying, "Hey, what can we do?" Well, I want to give you some practical ideas of what you and your team can do to be a source of the the solution to some of the things that are going on. And we all know with a game of football. When you eat with somebody and sleep with somebody and sweat with somebody and those kind of things, it's amazing what happens. Things, all, all the prejudice and all those things, they just seem to disappear because you get to know people. Uh, so that's going to be Friday. I encourage you guys to be on that call. But I want to thank Maurice for being our guest in the heart of coach uh, today. So, Maurice, thanks for your time today and, and just your insight. No problem. Anytime. Anytime. All right. 
Well, you guys make sure you follow West Kentucky football and keep up with what they're doing. Uh, they're doing great things there, and I appreciate Maurice being on the call. Appreciate you all being on the call too. God bless. Have a great day, and give them heaven. Thank you.